Hi there. With the release of Golang 1.18, we've seen generics come out. Some of you might be familiar with generics from other programming languages such as C++, and for some of you, generics might be a completely new concept. In this video, I just want to take you through how to implement generics in Golang in a simple step-by-step -step and becoming familiar with some of the new syntax changes. So without any further ado, let's just take a quick look. So I've got my setup here. Um, and what I have is a program called, well, let's see what it's called. It's called CNS uh, Go Generics. And there's a main.go. I've got a Go mod and I've got a launch uh, JSON. So let's do something simple, like say that I want to increment the sum of something. Now, I know there's an example of how to do this on the Golang website, but I think it's a bit dry and it can help to have somebody walk you through it. So traditionally, if we want to do like a sum of int, so we go like function uh, sum of int, and you might take in an integer, oh, sorry, um, input, and then that input might be an array of int, and then we return an output. Um, we might say something like for, okay, so val on range of input, and then we could increment it, right? So we'd have like a, a inc, which would be an int, and we'd say something like inc, uh, plus equals val, right? And in fact, just to uh, be a bit more precise here, we want to just say ink plus zero. And then we can return that, right? So no uh, format.printf. So no prizes for kind of guessing how this works. And then say sum of int, and then I can put my int here, and I can say uh, five, that kind of deal. So this is your kind of traditional um, sum of int. Now, what happens when I want to start using uh, different types? Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> what happens when I want to start using different uh, different types, right? So I want to think about using different primitives. So I might use uh, in64. I might want to use a float64. That's when things become a little bit tougher because I can't reuse this function, so I then have to make like a sum of float. Equally, if I want to count um, a byte array, or I want to count a string. These are different types, but you have very similar pieces of functionality you want to do with them. So let's rework this, right? So with the new generic syntax, so let's say generic, and I'll put non-generic, and you should hopefully see the difference. So what we see in the new um, syntax is sum of, is you get a new block style, uh, open close brace for your generic type, right? So I'm gonna call this T, and this could be of a bunch of different things. So I'm going to call it, it could be in 64. It could be of anything else. So I'm going to call it type any for now. So what does that actually mean? Type any is like an interface. But let's say I'll type in 64, right? And then what we need to do is we have input. And the input will be of type T, because T is the uh, generic type that's being defined here. And then the output would be again of type T. So that might look a little bit alien to folks who haven't sort of worked with this before, but what that's basically saying is this is the template for the generic, right? So this is what's going to be substituted as int64. So the input is actually an int64 array into sum of, and it will re be returning an int64. So if we take the inner logic, we think, well, how do we then change this? Okay, well, let's look. How do we change the inner logic to work like a generic? So int uh, so inc here will, is to hard coded as an integer. Actually, what we, sh we should be doing is saying, well, var inc is of type t, right? Um, and then what we say is the input on the range of input, we increment t and we return this. So now if I to change this to sum of, let's have a look what happens. We get an issue initially. So let's see. So it wants a generic and that generic is going to be of int 64. And we'll put 0, 1, 2. Let's close that out. Um, I, oops, I need that at the beginning. So there we see we've got in 64. However, this isn't very useful, right? I've just displaced the value somewhere else. So where or where do generics start to become useful? Well, this is when you can start to template this out. I talked a little bit about any. We could provide any. However, there's a new powerful operator that's come in where you can start to use piping. So you can pipe as an or. So let's see how that actually works. So let's say type um, number interface, and we're gonna say in 64 or float 64. And suddenly this interface can be piped in, put in here 
as the template of the generic. And that means that I take either in64 or float64 types. So you can see that that in64 works. But also, when I switch this out to a float64, this now also works. Uh, let's take that check the precision. And let's run that. And we'll see that we get our float64 printed out, which is pretty cool. Um, I think that what's worth showing you here is that this is a new set of opportunities for building reusable code. It's really interesting to me because if you think about a lot of the boilerplate we see in Kubernetes, we see a lot of boilerplate specifically around the machinery, API machinery layers in projects that do conversions of, say, open API spec into Kates, using generics as a way of creating more idiomatic and more expressive interfaces. I've literally just shown you um, what is on the Golang website, but hopefully in a, in a demo that puts to life a little bit more. Uh, let me know how you get on, any thoughts. The, the, the piping interface actually extends further, so you can actually say, um, you can pipe between types as well, not just those primitives that I've shown. And you know, I'd love to hear how, what you think about it, whether you think it's a good thing about Golang or it's a, it's a bad introduction to the language. Either way, thank you so much for watching this very short clip. Hope you enjoy. Thanks again, bye.